today I'm going to be showing you all of my blogging and vlogging equipment, my cameras, microphone, lighting, everything that I use in order to edit my videos and to take my blog pictures. So if you're interested in these kinds of techy things or if you're new to blogging and vlogging or if you're just an enthusiast and like to see what other people have for their setup then you might like watching this video. But first let me just add a tiny little note to say that I don't think you need all of this equipment in order to start making YouTube videos or to blog. This is the kind of equipment that I've acquired throughout five years of blogging and vlogging. So when I started, I definitely didn't have all these things, but hopefully this video will be useful if you're looking to better your content or to improve the quality of your videos and your blog photos and just get some ideas really of what the kind of things that you could have. Maybe you don't want to buy exactly what I have, but it might give you some insight into what kinds of things you could have for your sound, for your lighting, for your photos. And yeah, just hope you guys enjoy this video. So let's get started. So let's start from the very beginning, as Maria von Trapp would say. I started taking blog pictures with my iPhone, and at the time I think I had an iPhone 4. That was all that I used for not very long, because I am quite a techie enthusiast. I do like my camera gear, I like taking pictures, you know, and I immediately realised that I wasn't going to be happy just taking iPhone pictures. Although they were fine, for me I felt like I wanted something better. I really got into it when I started blogging, and I just wanted to improve everything. So I started with an iPhone 4, a couple of months later I bought a little point and shoot camera which was a Panasonic one. I'll leave everything detailed down below, I know this is very important when you're looking to buy technology equipment. I'll leave the model, name, number and wherever I can find links to it, it's all going to be in the description box below. So then I had after my Panasonic, I had my first DSLR only a few months later and that was a Canon uh, 1100 D, and that was like revolutionary for me because so far I only had iPhone camera and a little point and shoot and that my first DSLR made a huge difference to my content, to how my photos looked, they looked so much sharper and so, so much more detail to them. So I had that for quite a few months and then I got the itch again to improve and I bought a Canon 600D which was the camera that I had for the longest amount of time. Um, I used the 600D for quite a long time and it was a considerable considerable improvement from the 1100D. It had a flip out screen which the other one didn't have. I started my videos with that camera but then one day I got a little bit of dust inside the, um, the mirror of my camera which is kind of like the mechanism inside the DSLR and I could not get it out. I looked into getting it fixed but it would cost me a lot of money and I was also itching to upgrade again and it was just about the time that the Canon 70D came out. It had only been out for a couple of months so it was pretty new and was still very expensive to buy but I thought I'm going to treat myself and I'm going to get that. The reason that I got drawn for the Canon 70D to start was because of the autofocus and I think at the time it was the only DSLR that had this kind of capability and what that basically means is that if I get close up to the camera, like if I put my hand there, the camera automatically focuses on my hand instead of me having to manually change it or refocus which is what I used to have to do with my Canon 600D and my 1100D. The second thing that I like about the Canon 70D is the fact that it has a touch screen so you can touch to focus as well. When I'm taking blog pictures I fi find that very very useful. Again a much 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 bigger improvement than to the 600D. I did consider going for a full frame camera like the Canon 5D Mark II or the 5D Mark III but it was a lot more expensive than what I was willing to pay for a camera and although I still one day would like to have a full frame camera that day hasn't come yet. So that's the camera that I use for most of my videoing and my photos at the moment, it's the Canon 70D. I recommend this camera to every single person that asks me what camera, if I'm thinking of buying a DSLR, which one shall I go for? But if I just want to get a few quick shots of things, especially since having a baby, I don't really have the space in my bag to carry a big DSLR out, I usually take my Canon G7X, which is a point and shoot camera, it's not a DSLR, it's just a really nice and compact camera, it has a little flip out screen there and it's also touch screen which I really like. 
um, but I don't usually use this one for filming. I find that I prefer my DSLR uh, because of the depth of field and the way that the picture quality comes out. You will probably have seen a lot of vloggers talking about it and I really really do like it. It is overpriced for what it is. You can find lots of point and shoot cameras that aren't as expensive as this one but I think for what it brings it's worth the money. It has a little pop-out flash it has, like I said, the flip out screen, the touch screen. And if you like camera gear like I do, these things do make a difference and you know, you'll know really get some use out of it. I've got so much use out of this little camera. I wouldn't have believed it if I said that I was gonna use this so much. And sometimes it's just the only way to catch like a quick picture or, or like a, a video of my son doing something hilarious without having to whip out my DSLR camera. And my iPhone never really has any memory anyway to take any photos. So this little one here saves my bacon lots of times. In terms of iPhone, I currently have an iPhone 6 and I'm an Apple girl through and through. I've loved my iPhones for a very long time and I always upgrade to the newest model. The case I have at the moment, just in case you're curious, is a Anchor case. I think that's the name of the brand, as you can see there. It's scratch proof, it's, you know, fall proof, it's bump proof. And when you have a baby, this is the best thing ever. This is the closest thing that you can get to a baby proof iPhone case. Now for camera accessories. Um, the first thing which I think is very important if you do YouTube videos or take blog pictures is a little remote control for your camera. I got this from Amazon for about £5 if I'm not mistaken. It's the Canon RC6 remote control and it worked with my Canon 600D, not with my 1100D um, and it works with the 70D as well and it's basically just a wireless remote control and it's really good because you can take pictures of yourself from a distance, you can start and stop video from a distance as well and it has two little settings at the back. Um, if you put it on the bottom one when you're doing video you can take a picture, if you put it on the top one you can start and stop your video. Another thing I really recommend having is spare batteries for your camera. Um, I have about three or four spare batteries simply because there's nothing more frustrating than starting to record a YouTube video or picking up your camera to take blog photos and for it to be out of battery. So if you have spare batteries you can make sure that you always have one charged. So yeah you can pick these up from Amazon as well. There is the Canon own brand of batteries but that's a lot more expensive and this brand that I got is dot dot photo it's from Amazon as well that I got and I'll put the seller or the link to it below and it's perfectly fine it works really really well I've never had a problem with it I have two of these and I have two Canon branded ones and I don't notice any particular difference in the amount of time that it runs for so highly recommend spare batteries for your camera Another essential is memory cards. You can't really run your camera without a memory card. Um, I invested in 64 gigabyte memory cards recently because the 32 gigabytes were getting a bit small, especially for the quality that I record my videos in because I kind of like to record them in full quality on my camera and it was running out far too quickly. But before I had my 64 gig, I used to have this Kingston 32 gigabyte memory cards and they are very good value for money and they do the job well. The one thing that makes a big difference in recording videos in a high in quality camera like a DSLR is the class of the card. You might not even know that that exists but that little number there, that number 10, tiny little number, that is the class. So you have to have at least a class 10 card to record a video for longer than a few minutes. If you have any less than class 10, the video recording will be cut short um, and I only learned that because it started to happen to me. So all of my memory cards are class 10 and that's something to look out for. I almost forgot to talk about camera lenses which go hand in hand with DSLR cameras. I started by using the default 18 to 55 millimeters lens which comes with my Canon 70D DSLR which is a very basic standard lens but there is a but. It is an STM lens which means that it's a silence focusing lens. So if you're trying to get the best out of that automatic focus that I talked about, you really need a silent focusing lens. I don't know what the STM stands for, again annotated below, um, but what it does is that it focuses without making a noise when you're recording video. So whilst I'm talking here, if I try to move closer to focus something with an STM lens, you won't hear the camera going whoop whoop, which is what it does basically when it's trying to focus focus automatically. The camera, the, the lens that I'm using at the moment is a Sigma 18 to 35 milliliters. 
milliliters millimeters and although it's a very quiet lens when it's focusing it's not absolutely silent so if I focus now you can probably hear very which is the sound that the camera makes, the lens makes when it's focusing. I love the quality of it, I love the sharpness, I absolutely love this lens, but the only downside is that it's not completely silent, so you do have to put up with a little bit of noise from the camera focusing, which I do because I like the quality of it much better than the 18 to 55 Canon lens. I also have a Canon 15mm lens, which is a prime lens, but I don't use that lens as much nowadays because it's not a silent lens, so I can't use it for filming without it making a lot of noise when it focuses and because I have a crop sensor camera not a full frame the 15 millimeters can make everything just look a little bit too close to the camera I would highly highly recommend getting the Sigma 18 to 35 if you're into your photography and you're looking for a nice good sharp crisp lens especially for video and for blog photos now in terms of lighting and what I use to make my videos look brighter and for you to be able to see me properly, at first I only had my window and daylight to film and to take pictures, then I invested in two softbox light sets which I will put a picture now so you can see what they look like and they're basically two huge contraptions that you put one of either side of your camera so that they're facing you and the light is coming from both sides and inside the soft box there are two huge daylight bulbs so it's the most natural kind of light to have if you're trying to mimic daylight but I found them very inconvenient especially if you have a small house or if you really can't be bothered to be digging them out of a cupboard every time you need to film. If you have a place where they can stay set up, that's a lot easier because you don't need to get them in and out of their packaging, but they're not very small and they take up a lot of room. I was looking for alternatives and recently I've acquired a ring light and I will insert a clip of what it looks like here. And to me that gives me enough light along with daylight to make my videos bright and light and to make everything look, you know, as it should. It might not give me the same amount of light or brightness that I would have with the two softbox lights. I would still say if if you're looking to you know have the full thing the whole shebang get your ring light and get your two soft boxes but to me nowadays I don't even bother with my soft box lights because they're just so much of a hassle they're so big and bulky the brand that I went for is called newer I got it from Amazon I think there's a more expensive brand out there which most people seem to get but I wasn't planning on spending a lot of money on it and I found this brand on Amazon and I was very curious to know whether or not it was going to be good enough and thankfully it is. So if you're looking to buy the newer ring lights then definitely get it. It's a lot cheaper than the other brands. I think it's called the Diva ring light and then there's another one which sells in the UK um, which is a lot more expensive than the newer one. It works absolutely fine and I'm very, very pleased with it. This ring light doesn't come with a diffuser, but you can buy that separately on Amazon as well. The link is below of the one that I got and it came in a pack of lots of different colors diffuser, which I'll probably never use, but the one that I really wanted was the white diffuser. And it was really cheap to get it, so I just, got it because I find that the effect of the ring light without the diffuser can be a bit too harsh. The diffuser basically makes everything look a lot more natural. The other thing that I got to go with it was this little hot shoe adapter which means that you can put your ring light on the same tripod as your camera but because this here goes onto the hot shoe of your camera and then this bit goes onto the ring light you can't use the hot shoe of your camera at the top to attach a flash or a microphone and at the moment I'm using a microphone on top of my camera so I'm using the tripod for my ring light and the tripod for my camera. The tripod that I use for my camera I think it's called Hammer and I'll put the link below where you can find it. I think it was also from Amazon. It wasn't very expensive. It's really sturdy, really good quality. Not very exciting to talk about tripods as long as they do the job and they hold your camera up then it's a good tripod and it's held up pretty well over the years. 
As I spoke about microphone a minute ago, I have a little Rode microphone on top of my camera. It's a shotgun microphone, which basically means that it reduces the hissing that you hear on the background of videos if they're filmed with the built-in microphone from your camera. And the exact model of the one that I have, it's the Rode VideoMic Pro. It wasn't the most expensive, but it also wasn't the cheapest. So I went kind of for the middle ground one. And I think it has really, really made a difference into how my video sound it definitely makes me not have to shout as much in order to get the volume loud and clear I wouldn't say that it's definitely worth getting one only get one if you're thinking that you want to improve the sound of your videos if you're happy with the sound of your videos then maybe wait a little bit use that money to buy a lens or a light or something else um, it was definitely the last on my list of priorities and definitely the last thing that I bought of out of everything that I have in terms of camera gear for computer, I have a MacBook Pro, and this is on a little case that I have, which is like a marble effect. I got this case from Amazon, if you're interested. I'll also leave the link to it below. It's really cool. I'm kind of into marble at the moment, as a very stereotypical blogger kind of thing. For actual everyday work, editing, I do most of my things on my iMac, which I don't have it on my hands here to show you because it's really heavy and it's downstairs, but I'll insert a picture of it here. And I love my iMac. It's quite old compared to, you know, the new iMacs that are out, but I still love it and I think it does an amazing job. It's such a powerful computer. It processes everything really quickly and I couldn't recommend it enough. I went for the 27 inch one, which is the bigger screen. I think there's a 21 inch or something similar. For video editing I use my Sony headphones and these are really good because they fold like that so you can fit them in your handbag for traveling. They're very convenient. They're not the most comfortable, but they do the job and yeah, just normal headphones. I mean, sometimes I even use my Apple little earphones and it's absolutely fine. I don't find that I need these specifically, but if they are on hand, then I will use these. They're not very cheap and I don't think I would recommend buying them if it wasn't for it being portable, um, but if you're looking for something portable, then you might wanna give this a go. For storing all of my photos and videos, I use these little external hard drives from WD. This one is the My Passport Ultra, and it's so, so small and thin. Look at the size of that, it's the size of my hand, and I have quite small hands. They're really, really light, so convenient. I have probably about five of them that I've bought over the years, and I keep buying them every time that I run out of storage. I just find that this is the most the easiest way to store all, all of my videos and photos. I don't usually store anything on my computers because of two reasons. First, safety. If my computer disappears, all of my photos and videos go with it, so I don't usually store it there. And also, computers now nowadays don't tend to come with much built-in storage anyway, so you will run out of storage quite soon. And the second reason is for portability. If they are in my hard drive, I could literally plug this into any computer and be able to access my photos and my videos videos and do my editing. One of my most essential items for blogging and vlogging and also for family photos are these little external hard drives. They're so small as well, they don't take up much room at all. So definitely recommend these. Very, very recently though, I have upgraded our storage situation at home and this is gonna sound like I'm such a geek, but we bought a NAS, which is a network attached storage. It's basically a mini server that we have at home and that mini server stores all of our data and we can access it from any computer in our house without having to plug it into a specific computer and so it's so so handy because sometimes my hard drive is plugged into my um, iMac downstairs but I'm upstairs trying to edit and at least I know that my data is all accessible from my you know mini server network and it's definitely not an essential by any means. The one that I got is from the brand called Synology and the model, I can't remember, it's 
DS something, DS something play, and it's amazing. I highly, highly, highly recommend it. The other thing that you can do with it is you can stream it onto your TV or onto your phone or onto your iPad, and it's so convenient if you have movies that you, you know, store in your hard drives or if you have pictures that you want to show to friends and family, you can stream it from the NAS straight into your TV, into your iPad or iPhone. It was a birthday present from my husband to me, and he knows me so well to get me something like that. It is not your traditional birthday present, it is not a diamond, it's not a pair of earrings, but I absolutely loved it. It's definitely more to the professional end of blogging and vlogging. Now moving on from hardware and going into software, in terms of editing stuff, my favourite editing tools are Photoshop for editing photos and thumbnails of YouTube videos. I find that Photoshop is good for text rather than for editing the actual picture itself, but if you want to add text into a picture or to crop it nicely, very quickly, quickly and easily, I absolutely love Photoshop for that. For actual editing, I prefer Lightroom. They're both by Adobe and they are not cheap, but if, you're, if you like this kind of thing, then it's worth the investment. Lightroom to me is an essential. It's the easiest way for me to catalogue every single photo. I don't do a lot of retouching on my pictures anyway, but I do like to improve the brightness maybe and the contrast and the colours just to make the pictures look nicer and prettier. So I use Lightroom for that. For video editing, for a very long time I used iMovie, which is the basic movie editing software that comes with all Apple computers. Um, but as I grew a bit more into the YouTube world, I started to want more and to want to be more creative. And so I started using Final Cut Pro, which is the paid version, kind of like the step up from iMovie. If you're into video editing, Final Cut Pro just gives you so much more um, room to be creative and you have so many more options and it has definitely, definitely, I think, improved the quality of my editing or my videos. I hope you guys have found that as well because if you haven't then I haven't done that properly. I think I've come to the end of the video finally. This was such a long video, I do apologise. I didn't intend for it to be that long but I do get very excited when I'm talking about technology and camera and computers because this is kind of like my thing. If you found this video helpful or useful, make sure to give it a thumbs up and let me know in the comments below um, if you have any questions, if you want to know anything else about the equipment that I mentioned here on this video. And if you'd like to see more videos like this, then make sure to tell me on the comments below as well what kind of videos you would like to see. What would you like to see next? Would you like to see review of these products? Would you like to see I don't know, just let me know if you want to see anything more detailed about technology and, you know, equipment and cameras, etc, etc, etc. Also make sure you subscribe to my channel so you don't miss any of my videos. It is free, it's easy, there's a little button down there that says subscribe and it won't cost you a thing and it will make me very, very happy. If I forgot to talk about anything, I'll make sure to put everything in the description box below, so do check that out because everything that I talked about on this video is detailed down there with links where you can find it and you know the specific names of everything so i think i'm gonna wrap this up and say farewell i'll see you on my next video bye